So today we're going to conclude our discussion on BSP. In the first couple of videos, we looked at how to bring basic BSP into our maps, and we looked at how to edit it to get it to do pretty much anything we want. So we're almost ready to start building our maps. And uh, the last thing we probably want to do is put on some materials just because, well, for a few different reasons. If we open up this uh, here project and we go into that contact example that we downloaded, uh, basically we're going to look at that map that shows how Epic iterates their maps, and indeed that's the way most professional level designers iterate their maps. And if we go into that and we have a quick look, we can see that in their first iteration, Okay, if we just go in here, they don't use just that standard sort of dev texture, that uh, checkerboard gray. They've added a few different custom ones here just to kind of liven it up a little bit. Uh, this helps us differentiate the surfaces, it adds contrast, and it definitely is just much more pleasing to the eye. And we can see that they've just created a simple sort of ceramic tile texture here with a little bit of a depression, I guess a normal map, a little bit of shine, and they got a you know three different colors here they got this yellow they got this white and they got this blue and we can just see it's a little bit more visually pleasing kind of creates a little bit of ambiance lifts a little bit and uh, let's face it it's fun to apply materials so that's part of it too but it kind of just looks much nicer right as a first pass and it makes it a little bit more easier to play and to visualize so if we just jump out of here real quick and let's just go into a map that i created before this is youtube project one to illustrate a point when we drag in some BSP, the editor by default adds this sort of dev texture kind of checkerboard, right? So if we go up to our modes menu and we go into geometry and you drag in a box, you can see it puts that, that on there. It's kind of that great texture kind of checkerboard look. And uh, you know, you can build your basic BSP map out of that no problem. If you don't want to go any farther than that, go ahead you're ready to start mapping your uh, your layouts but to me to my eye you know like we can see a little bit of uh, architecture here that I built and it's got a little bit of trim detail a kind of a cornice and a kind of a frame and just by simply slapping on a few materials on here we can make this look much better and it's just uh, you know a little bit more easy uh, to stomach now I'm not gonna get uh, I'll show how to I'm applying uh, these materials in more detail but we can see just really quick here just by spending two seconds we can totally liven this up and you know this is going to be much nicer to present to your uh, you know uh, your production team if you will or if you're developing for yourself but see how much nicer this is just takes a second and we can see how that totally comes to life now so there is some value to applying materials and that's why I thought it'd be nice to have sort of a simple material application video on this to uh, really take us to the final stage of adding our BSP and then we can start blocking up our maps all right, so let's just get out of here for now. Let's delete this. Let's make sure we don't have any material selected. And I just want to come up here, so I'm just going to come out to there. All right, let's actually go into our root folder content. Okay, so there we are. So when I created this map, I did include the starter content, which is here. Now, if we go up to our modes menu and drag in a box, again, we can see that it just puts that checkerboard in there. And what we want to do is be able to apply some materials on there easy enough, right? So if we do have the starter content, we're just going to go into the starter content here and then click that materials folder, and there we have them here. There's quite a few in here. We can mess around with them. I do think a video on materials is going to be needed because it's so important, but we're just going to kind of scratch the surface a little bit more than we did in our introduction video. Now, you don't have to select anything to add a material. What you want to do is get into that material folder where you have some or go to your custom ones, whatever. Here we're in the content one. Just a left mouse button and drag it onto whatever material surface you want and then release the mouse button and then it just puts it on like that. So fast and easy. but. Like everything else in Unreal 4, there's more than one way to do things. So this is one way. So, you know, again, if we just want to put this brick one on there, just drag it over and drop it on there and it's done. Now, what if we want to grab a bunch of surfaces? Well, we can do it this way too. We can grab a surface and then drag that on there as well. So that's another way. But what if we want to grab all the surfaces? Well, grab one surface, Shift B for Bravo. Shift B grabs all the surfaces of that, um, that, uh, that box. Then we can just grab that texture, slap it on there, and it does it on all sides. So that's one way we can add materials to the faces of our BSP brushes. Another way we can do it too is if we just expand this so we can see it a little bit better, and say we grab that face there, we can grab one of these uh, materials here, left mouse button, keep the mouse button down, drag it over, and we can plop it in this box here, and it's given us that green border, which tells us that's a good connection. So we'll just release that there, and then it puts the material on there as well. And similarly, we can grab more than one face, Shift-B, whoops, select one face, Shift-B, 
There we go, got them all selected. We can grab, say, this cobblestone. We can drag it into this box here, release it, and then it puts it on there as well. So that's the second way of adding material. Now the third way we can add a material, we just have to make sure we're out of this and we don't have anything selected, is if we pre-select our material, so here we are back in our material folder, say we'll pre-select this one. If we pre-select the material and then drag in our geometry, it will also apply it like so. So that's the third way you can apply materials. Now, what if we want to have some control over the sizing and the editing of, the, of, of that material? Well, easy enough to do. Let's just select this box and delete it. I'll deselect everything, just bring in another box with that depth texture. There it is there. And let's go ahead and apply this material onto this face here. So it's just, just this brick. And there we see it there. So let's select that face. And then we've got these controls here where we can manipulate this material here. So the first two controls are pan. So whether we want to move it left or right or up and down, we just toggle that left and right here, up and down here. And then these are our increments. So for example, if we want to move it over, if we look in our render window, there's it moving 164th, if we want slightly more finer adjustment, we can go there, or a more coarse adjustment. And similarly, if we want to go to the left, we just toggle that. And then up and down, same thing, right? And this would be up. And we can put in uh, custom values here. So if we want to, say, come up just one, put one in, hit enter, and then we can see it jumped up. We've also got these rotate tools. Uh, see, it's got 45 built in. And if we want to go the other way, we just toggle this the other way. And I guess that'd be good if you had a roof line or something. And then we can go 90 there. Or we can go customs, I don't know, say 24, hit enter. And then we can do that as well. Let's go undo. Flipping is just like a mirror image of it. Because this is symmetrical, it's not going to show very well. But okay, for example, if we mirror it horizontally, we can see the grime jumping around. But so that's another way we can flip those UVs. And then here, of course, we can scale it. So if we go three, say, or three, and we have a really big brush, three, we can scale that by hitting apply, and then we see it scaled it. So, so that's that simple. And really, with this start of content, with these three simple materials here, you can start uh, really laying out your uh, level, and uh, away you go. So, so that'll conclude it uh, for the BSP for uh, putting it into our maps, editing it, and then adding some basic materials. So let's take a look at a really quick look I may emphasize on creating some custom materials. Let's say you just cannot stand any of these and you just desperately want to make some of your own simple ones. Now again, we're not going to look at this in any great detail. I think a future video on materials would be a good thing. But let's say we just want to create our own uh, dev textures, if you will. And I'm going to just fly through this, but you can follow along real quick. So I'm going to start off by uh, just creating a folder and I'm going to call it Tom Material one and I'm just going to go inside that folder and I'm going to create a blueprint. So I'm going to right mouse click and I'm just going to create a material blueprint right there. And I'm going to rename it uh, Tom Parent Material 1. And I'm just going to pop that open by double clicking and I'm going to go in here. And uh, by creating that blueprint, it gives us sort of this output node. And we just need one other thing here. I'm going to right mouse button. I'm going to search for vector parameter. And we can just put a, uh, a texture in here. But uh, I'll go vector parameter just so I can have some uh, things that I can change. Some parameters that I can change. And I can uh, double click in here and I can uh, just do the color picker. I'm just going to pick a neutral gray. I'm going to hit OK. And all we need to do is wire this up. So left mouse button, drag into the base color. There we have it there. And we're going to hit Save. And now we've got our first dev texture. It's just going to be a, 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 a neutral gray. And what I'm going to do is create some material instances here. So we'll just do this real quick. And we'll call this Tom Color 1. Enter. And I'm going to just hit Control C for copy. And I'm going to paste that over a couple of times. I'm going to create myself three different colors here. And I'm going to go with a, well, you can go a gray theme or a blue theme or whatever you want. So the first color, we'll go with, a, say, a blue theme. So we want to click this color here and come into this color picker. And let's go up to blue. I'm going to create a very dark blue. So we'll go there. It's almost like a purple, more of a blue. There we go. Quite a dark blue. And you can do this in grays or any colors you want, really. But I'll go with a the blue theme. So the second one, I want a light blue. So let's go in here, click there, get our color picker up. We'll go with that blue again, and we'll go kind of with a kind of a neutral blue, if you will, there. Hit Save. 
And then finally we'll go to our third one and then we're going to create a very light blue. So let's make sure this is checked. Come up here, we'll go for our blue. And we'll go for a very light blue this time, all the way up there. Hit save. And just that fast, we've created three custom dev textures. So if we wanted to go over this wall here, let's say for instance, and start dragging in our custom ones. Uh, let's see here. Let's go with a light color for the wall. And let's go with a dark blue for the trim. And you can see just that easy. We've actually created our own custom materials. And, uh, you know, let's face it, it's fun. I Definitely I can see a material video coming just because it's such a big, expansive topic and so important. And we can create all kinds of amazing things with the roughness and the shine. And there it is, just that simple to create your own custom dev textures. So the last thing we'll look at is how to bring in some custom content, particularly some of those materials. Let's say, for example, you wanted to use that ceramic tile material that uh, Epic used in the first iteration of their workflow map. Let's say we wanted to use the, 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 those ceramic tiles in our map. It's really easy to uh, import. Well, we're going to say migrate. It's important because uh, you'll see in a minute. But let's go ahead and open that content example. And I'm not going to save this. And uh, indeed, this is the way you can migrate assets from anything that you download, whether that's uh, materials, whether it's uh, sounds, whether it's blueprints, uh, it would be the same sort of uh, procedure here. So let's just go into the root folder of this uh, particular um, uh, folder here. And then let's have a look at this assets folder and let's go into materials. And if we just sort of expand this, uh, we can see these things. Where are they here? Come on now. Okay, there we are. And we can see the tiles here. And I just happen to know that this is the parent. If you uh, hover over, you can see the flat. It says material. And then these are the material instances. So we're going to grab all four of these. So we're just going to left click, hold down control, and let's left click all of these. And then we right click and then this flyout comes out. And we want to look here for asset access actions and come down here to migrate. We don't want to export. We don't want to bulk export. We want to migrate. So if we click on that, we get this. And then basically the editor is telling us that these will be all the items that it's going to be uh, migrated. And there's the parent and there's the three instances. So we're going to click OK. And then we have to put it in the proper map. So let's just make sure we're in uh, that YouTube project one. And you have to put it in this content folder. If you don't do that, the editor will basically correct you. So put it in the content folder, select folder. We can see here bottom right, it says content migration completed successfully. Okay, so let's go into that YouTube map. Just pop that open. And uh, just one caveat is that uh, the way these materials are wired, particularly the ceramic tile ones, uh, you can't edit them, unfortunately. They're just not wired to do that. But let's go into the root folder and we can see it creates this assets folder. So if we double click and double click, here we have them here. And they're kind of odd, as I said. So if we, uh, for example, bring in a box. Well, let's bring in three boxes and then we can show all the colors. So there they are. Whoops. There they are there. Wow. We wanted it to go there. There we are. All right. So let's click that. Shift B. And then we can just drag that on there. Let's click this one. Shift B. We'll drag the yellow. And then we'll click this and we'll uh, Shift B. And then we'll grab the blue. But here's the problem. And it's a bit of a drawback. But um, oops. If we grab that face, we can see if we come down here to our geometry, we can't edit that. So if I try to, for example, well, rotate it 90 degrees, it kind of jumps around, but it's not rotating 90 degrees. So we can't edit it. And that's just the way uh, it's wired. Like, for example, if I go to scale here and try to double that size. It's not going to do anything. So unfortunately, it's just the way it's wired. Uh, this doesn't have any variables in it. So it's perfect for what uh, Epic's purposes is, but uh, you know, a little restrictive with in terms of uh, its uh, customization. But if for whatever reason you wanted to use that ceramic tile, kind of in the spirit of uh, the way Epic did in their first iteration of their map, if you want to use that for your BSP, it's all you need to do uh, to migrate those materials in. So that's that.